Hi there guys, it's Mike from MCQ Bushcraft here and a few days ago I did a little bit of shooting and got myself some pheasants and I've got one of those pheasants with me today and this is a cock bird so it's a male pheasant and it's in very good condition, nice and big and this one's been hanging for about four or five days I don't like to hang them too long because I'm not overly keen on a very gamey taste but in cool weather you can hang them for quite some time without getting too much of that I've also got myself a fire going using hardwoods like ash and the aim is to get a good bed of embers going because what I'm going to show you today is a method that I use when I'm cooking pheasant out in the field and it just happens to be my favourite way of cooking pheasant when I'm out doing camping or bushcraft and that's stick roasting over a fire. Before we get this bird cooking we obviously have to dress it first and by the time we've done that hopefully the fire will be ready to cook on so that's what I'm going to do next. I'm plucking the bird in this case because it has a lot of fat on it and I want to keep that fat because fat's obviously a very good source of energy it's going to add flavour it's going to stop it drying out so much by keeping the skin on and pheasant's skin is very fragile so plucking them can be difficult especially on a cold bird like this you can see I just tore it then as I was talking so you do have to be careful and it's not always going to be a perfect job but preserving that skin will improve it if you're cooking it over a fire and it's far easier to pluck a fresh bird. The places where the skin is most likely to rip are areas where there's trauma to the skin where pieces of shot have come out. This has got some pretty heavy trauma on the right wing so the skin is really tearing around there but that's not a problem as I say you've just got to work with what you've got sometimes You can support the skin with your fingers as well, just to tighten it up so the feathers come out a bit easier. So I've plucked this bird as best I can. And you can see I've lost a little bit of skin around the neck, which I'm not too worried about. But unfortunately where it's taken the main majority of the impact, as it's been hanging, this has kind of retracted back and exposed a lot of the meat. It's not really a problem and there's no issue with hygiene. It's just a, a bit of a shame because that will obviously continue to retract when it's on the heat and a lot of that fat will escape and, and drip away and the skin will start to split. But it shouldn't dry out too much. I've had skinned pheasant over the fire many a time and it's always been really moist and quite nice. It's never been particularly dry. I think it just depends how long you really cook it. But all I'm going to do now is get my axe, take the head off, take the wings off and the feet and then obviously get the guts out. So I've just gutted this bird by slicing straight underneath and tearing everything out and remove the entire back end which is what I normally do when I'm stick roasting over a fire or cooking outdoors I generally just get rid of the abdomen altogether and everything comes out. So I've got a stick here, it's sharpened at one end and I've actually put a split in it with my axe by putting my axe on top of the hazel and splitting down the grain and there's a reason for that because when we get this running through we obviously don't want it to, to spin around on the fire so I usually pop a piece of wood through there a small piece of hazel and now that should turn and you shouldn't really have to worry about things kind of falling all over the place but let's get this on the fire and get it cooking So if you look at this Y here that I've got the spit in, it actually acts as a wedge and it's gripping the spit and it won't let it turn. Ideally that's what I look for when I make spits like this. I just look for a very tight piece of hazel if that's available. If not, you can make this spit into a square and lock it in or even use a piece of cord. There are many clever ways of doing it. You can even use the Y on the end and actually sort of unhook it and hook it back in but it's just easier to find a piece of hazel that acts a bit like a wedge and will grip it. This clean water has cooled down now. I'm gonna use it on my hands. It's nice and warm, just to get the blood and debris off from the pheasant. 
Oh yeah, I've got a plaster on my finger by the way and, and I've got a blister, an unpopped blister on my finger where I got burnt some time ago. And obviously I didn't want it to pop and then be exposed to whatever I was doing so I put a plaster on it to protect it. Just uh, I'll probably get picked up in the comments section at some point. Let's mention it as a disclaimer. So if you're having trouble getting some of the stuff off, moss is very, very useful as like a woodland pan scrubber. Just make sure you let your hands dry out afterwards. If you have a knife as well, it's worth cleaning under your nails. Like a little neck knife or something, you can clean under your nails and keep them clean. There's always dirt under there, I'll do that in a moment and then give it another rinse. Let's get this back in the fire, keep it warm. I've had to stoke up the fire a little bit, it was dying out. You can see there's quite a lot of flames now and we don't really want that. So we can just take the pheasant off and just prop it up a bit further away from the flames or, or take it off completely because the outer will just cook too quickly and it will start to just tear away and the inside won't cook and the outside will be burnt so you know you can always move it to the side. I'm using the thermal wall as the other side of the actual fork for the spit. I'm just going to get this out of the way and up there it should get a little bit of heat but not get burnt. I'll just get him over there actually. So I'll wait for this to die down again to coals. So it's putting out a lot of heat but no flame and then we can get him back on. But my water's almost boiled for me to clean my knives. I should also mention that you want to rotate the uh, pheasant sort of every 10-15 minutes just keep an eye on it check it out, have a look inside, outside, it's just really judging by eye. I've wiped most of the debris away with some moss and I will continue to do that but I'm just going to get a bit of boiling water on there. There we go. This has been cooking for about an hour and a half now and it's looking pretty good. Fire's obviously kicking out a nice amount of heat. I think we're ready to just have a look so I'm just going to take my neck knife here just cut into the breast and just check what it's like yeah it's looking pretty good there you go that is nice and cooked should be cooked through as well you can always leave it on there for you know longer than you mean to with a a cold fire cooks very very slowly instead of blasting things on flame and that way you can just ensure that things are well cooked because I always make sure things are, are cooked through and through when I'm outside eating food like this. It will just take a piece of that. Mm. That is really good. Wow. Keeping that skin on just makes all the difference. And even when it's a bit burnt like this, I quite like things a little bit burnt sometimes. And that is amazing. Let's rotate that round a bit. Ooh. That bit of breast meat there was absolutely delicious and the fat 
complements it fantastically. It really does crisp up and it gives it a lot of flavour. And not only that, it provides your body with a, with a hell of a lot of energy. An energy that it can use far more efficiently than just lean meats and vegetation. If anybody out there has ever done a few weeks out in the wilderness and, you know, lived off of vegetation, so wild edibles and, you know, small game, for example, that doesn't generally have a lot of fat on it, you'll notice your energy levels will plummet and you'll get very hungry and it takes a long time for your body to adjust to getting used to using those types of um, nutrition that you put in it efficiently because in the modern world we're quite used to simple and complex carbohydrates and getting a lot of fat which our body can use very very efficiently as energy. Protein alone, you've probably heard of meat starvation or rabbit starvation. It's not an exact science but I think it's just a term used to say that if you're eating lean meats they don't have all the nutrition you need in them and just surviving off meat alone you get a lot of urea in the bloodstream, a lot of toxicity and you really do need wild edibles and fats to go alongside lean meats to actually keep you energised and healthy out in the wilderness. But I'm going to tuck into the rest of this and I thought I'd just put this on video. I'd normally cook this at home but I'm cooking out in the woods today just to show you what I'd do if I was out here camping and I was cooking that pheasant. And also a little bit on hygiene, just a bit of boiling water, keeping things clean and dry. You don't need to be too OCD with it but it just requires a little bit of common sense. So thanks again for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you very soon in another one. Take care.